Hello everyone, Top Hat Waffle here, and today we're going to pick up where we left off last time on creating our first Counter-Strike Global Offensive competitive level. Of course, the first thing that we're going to have to do is head over to the Tools section on Steam and load up the SDK. Once that's loaded up, go ahead and double click on Hammer World Editor. After Hammer's loaded up, we can go ahead and load that last file that we were working on. So this is where we left off last time. We have a floor, two walls, and one player spawn. We're going to expand on this and kind of make it a few segment room with maybe a window or so in it, and then we're going to bring it into game. So the first thing I'm going to do is get no draw to be my active material, and we could do that either using the face edit sheet or we're just going to browse for no draw using the texture browser. Once that's selected, I can go ahead and switch my camera to 3D flat for now. I'm not really concerned with what textures are applied to what brushes. I'm just going to build out with no draw for now. So using my mouse to zoom in on my viewports and holding spacebar, clicking and dragging to go ahead and pan my views, I'm just gonna kinda get myself where I want to be to make these walls larger. I already have the floor, so I'm just going to select the floor and the wall and we'll make it a bit longer. Now let's say we wanted to put a small structure surrounded by four walls. So we already have the two walls, we'll just need to expand this wall out a little bit longer. And that's good. Now I just need to make the two more walls and I can do that easily by just Selecting this brush, holding shift, and dragging it to the side. I'm also going to do the same with this other wall, since it's already the correct size. Now, because we have 3D flat on, we can't actually see those textures. So I'm just going to switch back really quick, and I just want to flip these walls 180 degrees, since they already are textured. So going back to 3D flat, we can go ahead and start to build out a small little structure in the center. So using the block tool over on this side here, I'm just going to make what's going to be basically the foundation for this little building. So just drawing the outline in my top view and then resizing its height down in my side view and then hitting enter to go ahead and create that. So this will be the size of my little structure. It's going to be basically like a shed. So this shed is going to need four walls. To make these four walls, again, just using the brush tool over on the side. Just going to draw an outline of what one of my walls is going to be in my side view. And then hitting enter. And then just doing the same thing in the top view. This brush was created inside of my foundation a little bit. So I'm just going to bring that up and then resize it after it's been made creating my third wall and then lastly what will be the doorway is just going to be two separate pieces. So we're not going to be super fancy with what this room or structure is. We're just going to put a flat roof on top and this is just going to consist of me copying the floor up to the top. So with that done we just need to put basically skybox around it. So the easy way to do that is I'm going to select these four outside walls and then just hold shift and drag them up to make a copy. This is where we're going to switch back to our textured viewport. We need to make these the skybox material. To select the skybox material, let's just head over to our texture browser and then do a search for tools skybox without any spaces. We want the regular blue tools skybox texture. What this texture does is it will define the bounds of our map where the sky is. It also lets the game know that we should display the sky backdrop in this area along with our 3D skybox if we had one which we'll go over later. It also plays a big part in lighting our levels since that's where light from the sun will be cast from. If we don't have this skybox texture we cannot have any true sunlight in our level. To apply the skybox texture, let's just select these four walls that we've copied up and then just click the texture application tool. Lastly, we need to seal our level and a quick definition of what that means is, is stuff on the inside of our level cannot reach this blackness that we call the void. 
We'll go over this in more detail a little bit later when we understand the visibility engine a bit more. So lastly, to seal it up, we're going to copy this bottom brush, which is our ground, to the top since it fits perfectly, and then also apply the skybox texture to it. By default, the skybox backdrop that we're using, which is also referred to as the 2D skybox, is the sky dust skybox. We're easily able to change this if we navigate to map and then map properties. We'll see here that skybox texture name is just sky underscore dust. We can take a look at what default skyboxes are with Counter-Strike Global Offensive if we just hit F1 on our keyboard to open help. The help section is the Valve Developer Community. Inside here is a wiki that holds basically everything you could ever want to know about how to use Hammer. For now, we're just going to go to the top right and do a search for sky list and then hit enter. Once the page loads, we're going to go over to the table of contents here and then click on Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This will bring us down to where the CSGO skyboxes are stored. We can see that there is a quick preview along with the name here. I'm going to grab the Vertigo skybox. So I'm just going to copy the name. And then go back to Hammer and replace Sky Dust with Vertigo. Lastly, we'll need some sun in our level. And to do that, we need to create a new entity. Selecting our Entity tool and then placing a new entity in the level. Double clicking on that in the 3D view to bring up its object properties. The object properties window is where we configure various entities in our map. We have a few tabs up the top, but this is the main one that we'll spend time in, the class info tab. Here we can change the class. We just want to change this from info player terrace to light underscore environment. Light underscore environment is what will cast light into our level through the skybox, effectively acting as our sun. For now, we're just going to use the settings off of the sky list page as they've conveniently given them all to us right here. So for vertigo, I'm just going to copy down these settings into my light environment. So my sun angle is going to be 0, 0650. 0. My pitch is negative 72. My ideal brightness is this number, which is an RGB value with a proprietary intensity at the end. And our ambience. If none of that really makes sense to you, don't worry about it for now. We'll go over lighting later. For now, we just need lighting to actually be able to see our level after we've compiled it. We still have our little structure in the center that we actually need to texture because if we recall, no draw isn't rendered. So if we compiled right now, that's what we'd see. Nothing. Let's find a few simple textures using the face edit sheet over on the left. Clicking browse, let's search for concrete. Once we find a texture that we like, we can double click to select it and then just right click on the faces that we want to apply the texture to. I'm hitting Z to enable mouse look in my 3D view, and then Z to turn it off again. You'll end up hitting Z quite a lot while working in Hammer. I want the roof to be a wood texture. Same for the floor. I'd like the walls to be brick. and then the interior walls to be plaster. Closing out of that, we now have our small little structure. To be able to actually spawn in the level now, we need to raise our spawn point up. When we place a spawn point by default using the Entity tool, it places it directly on the ground. This will sometimes cause an issue to the game, so as a best practice, we always raise our spawn points up after we place them. So let's just take this spawn point that we've just placed and raise it up about 16 units. 
Now we can see that the spawn point is floating in the air. When the game detects that a spawn point is floating in the air, it'll automatically place them on the ground underneath them. This results in the spawn point always being valid and never preventing a spawn. Now let's compile our level. Let's make sure we've saved. There's a few ways to actually invoke a compile. You can click file and then run map, or you're able to click this little run map button. My favorite is F9. If this is your first time compiling in Hammer for Global Offensive, you're going to be presented with what's called the normal compiler. Due to an update during Wildfire, we now have to use the expert compiler to get proper lighting. Let's click the expert button to switch to that mode. This mode is a little bit more intimidating, but we actually have a preset that'll do everything that we need it to do. Under configurations, default is selected automatically. We want to click the drop down and select full compile HDR only. This automatically contains all compile settings that we need for our level to look and behave properly after the wildfire update. Now let's quickly run through what each of these steps does and how they impact your computer and the level. The first compiler is the BSP compiler. This is what actually converts the geometry in Hammer into a format that the game can read like a BSP file. The geometry that this converts or compiles is stuff like our shed here, our spawn points if we had doors in our level, and everything else. This compile process usually only takes about five to six seconds even on large levels. The next compile process is viz or visibility. This compile process is a little bit more intense for your machine to handle and as a result will usually make the computer run at about 100% CPU usage. This compile process takes all visibility information and then bakes it down into the level so clients don't have to do it on the fly. This typically results in higher frame rates for lower end machines. The downside to this is, the more complex your level is, or the more unoptimized it is, the longer it will take. The last compile process is lighting, or RAD for radiosity. This compile process will also peg your CPU at about 100% for the entire time that it's running. This compile process is computing how light will look on all of the surfaces in your level. It also computes how light should reflect off of each surface so that reflective metal in your level will actually reflect the light onto the surrounding surfaces. Typically, the larger the level is, and the more complex it is, with more lighting, the longer this process takes. The last two commands, copy file, just moves the compiled map file from our save location into the game's maps folder so it can be read. The very final one loads the game and then loads the level. Some people don't like this, and I'm one of those. I opt to turn this off and launch the game through Steam in windowed mode instead. Now that we have a brief understanding of what each one of these steps does, we can start a compile for a level. Let's check the wait for key press when done compiling. This will let us take a quick look at our compile log before it closes on us. Click go to start the compile. Since this is a basic level, it went by pretty quickly. If we scroll up, we can see all of the feedback. Any errors that the compiler receives will be marked in red and warnings in yellow. Since we don't see any red or yellow, our level's pretty good. Let's load Counter-Strike from Steam so we can check out our level. Since our level isn't on the workshop, we'll have to use the console to load it. Under Options, Game Settings, make sure Enable Developer Console is set to Yes. Then press the tilde key, which is to the left of one on your keyboard, to open the console. From here, type map, space, whatever you saved your map as. You should see it autocomplete in the list below. Select it, and then hit submit to load the level. Once the level's loaded, we can click continue, and then join a team. Now that we've spawned, we see that we have our small structure in the middle, surrounded by four brick walls. Our skybox is no longer the dust sky, since there's not little villages off in the distance. This is the Vertigo 2D skybox. If you'd like to quickly preview what a different skybox looks like in your level, you can turn on SV Cheats 1, and then type SV Skybox Name, and then the skybox that you want to preview. So if we wanted to see sky underscore dust, we just type that in and hit enter. If we didn't change our skybox to Vertigo, this is what it would look like instead. 
I hope you enjoyed this quick little rundown on how to get a quick little level working inside of Hammer, compiled, and in-game so you can run around and check it out. Join us tomorrow for the next one.